CSS finally has native support for if statements, which add a lot of power to CSS, but honestly, I'm not that excited for it. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about what these CSS if statements are, how they work, and why they may not be that necessary. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And I have a really simple example, not using any if statements or anything, just to show you what we can do with this code. As you can see, I have a box that starts out red and it's going to change color on different screen sizes. So you can see it changes to blue at this medium screen size and on the small screen size, it changes to green. This is really just to emulate some media queries across different screen sizes, a very common thing that you're gonna do in web development. And the annoying thing that people will see when they look at this is that I have a lot of different queries set up to create this. For example, I need to use my box query three different times, one for each media query plus one outside. I also need to define this huge line for my media query. There's just a lot of space to essentially redefine one variable across this. If I had to do this on like five, six, seven different media queries, you could see I have a lot of code to do a very small amount of stuff, especially when I'm only modifying one property. This is one use case for the if statement comes in. The if statement allows you to essentially have a lot of if then else checks inside of one single property of CSS. So you can give it multiple different values based on different property checks. And this can be things like media queries, supports queries, style queries, and so many other different queries. I'm gonna start by talking about media queries because they're the most basic and we'll get more advanced from there. So let's go ahead and we're gonna change this property using the if statement. So for the if statement, all you do is you type in if, wrap it inside of parentheses, and generally I'm gonna bring this onto a new line to make it easier to format. And the first thing we need to do is we write out our query, the thing we're checking for. In our case, we're doing a media query. So we're gonna type in media, and then in parentheses, we're gonna type out what our query is. So let's say with less than or equal to 1000 pixels. That's just matching this query right here. We then follow that up by a colon, and then we put whatever the value we want. In our case, we want a background color of blue, so we're gonna type in blue right here. End that with a semicolon, and that essentially gives us our first if check. So if this is true, it gives us the value of blue. If this is not true, it's gonna go down to the next if check that we have. So we can come in here with a simple media. We could say width is less than or equal to 500 pixels. And then we can say that we want the color in this case to be green. So it's saying, okay, if the query is less than 1,000 pixels, it's blue. If it's less than 500, it's green. And then let's say, you know what? We've checked all the things we wanna check. We wanna throw in an else statement. All you do is you type in else, and then we're going to put a colon followed by our value, which in our case is going to be red. That's our default value. And this is going to be our background color right here. So I can get rid of these media queries down here and we should have the same result. So we give this a save and we move around our page. You'll notice it changes to blue. And you can see here, it actually doesn't change to green. And that's because of one really important thing we need to understand, which is the order of operations. Similar to how I had my media queries specifically in order where the last query was the smallest query here of 600 pixels. And let me change this to 600 as well. The reason this was my smallest query, my last query was because in CSS, the way the cascade works is if you have all things equal in specificity, whichever is the last one defined is the going to be the one that applies. So in my case, green was applied because it's the last one and it's my smallest measurement, which makes sense. Now, in the case of if statements, it works a little differently because our first if check that is hit is going to be the one that works. So you can see here, media less than or equal to a thousand pixels is going to be true whether we're less than 600 pixels or not. So this is going to be hit for all values less than a thousand. So we never actually get to this green case. So we need to bump this green case up one level to have our smallest, most specific media query go first. Now we'll see that everything will work. We go from red to blue all the way down to green. So everything is working exactly the same as it did before, but instead of having a bunch of different media queries across a ton of different lines, I have one single if check that I could put all my different code inside of. And if I wanted to check other things besides just media queries, I could do that inside of here as well. Now, obviously this is a good thing and it has benefits, especially in this type of use case, but I find more often than not when I'm changing things across media queries or different style queries and so on, I'm usually changing multiple properties, not just one single property which is where this is a little bit of a downside because now if I wanted to change, for example, my text color across these different screen sizes as well, well, I'm gonna copy this entire thing down and now I need to change what my text looks like. For example, here I can make my text red, here I can make my text black, and let's say here I can make my text white. Now, if we give that a save and I actually put some text inside of here, so we'll just come inside of here, give it some bogus text, and we'll change my font size so it's legible. There we go. 
you can now see this will work. You can see my font size is, or my font color is changing across these different media queries. But you'll notice I've had to copy what these media queries are across different files. And it's a little bit of a cumbersome amount of work here because I'm now able to put it all inside of one CSS selector, but obviously I have to do different repeats inside of my media queries. So depending on how many different properties you're overwriting versus not overwriting, it may not actually make sense to use a if statement in these particular cases and a normal media query would do you just fine. Now, some of the benefit of the if statement though is it can do things that a media query cannot do. For example, we can do a style query inside of here. So let's say I wanted to do a simple style query and I wanted to style it based on a CSS property. So we'll just come up here, we'll define a CSS property that says test and we'll just set it to the value of high. There we go, it doesn't really matter. So what I can do inside of here is I can say, you know what, where the property of test is equal to the value of high, then I want my background color to be green. Otherwise, I want my background color to be red. And down here for our color, we'll just get rid of that because we really don't care about that. So you can see here, I'm missing a semicolon. So when I give that a save, we're now back to normal. So you can see since this value is high, my color over here is green. If I change this value to something else, you'll notice now my color changes to red because it doesn't match that test of high. So this is a really great thing that we cannot do with media queries, but we can do this with container style queries, which is something that's new coming out to CSS that'll probably be in all browsers before if statements are. So if we come in here, we can do an at container query. And instead of doing a normal container query related stuff, we can come in here with a style query and I can do the exact same thing. I can say test equal to high. And now the code inside of here is gonna follow that style. And just to prove this works, I'll just come in here and I'll say that my color for the box, so we'll say dot box color is going to be white. There we go. And if I change this to high, you should see that my color will change. But you'll notice it actually doesn't change. The reason for that is because our container needs to work on an element essentially above it. So we'll move this into a variable above it. We'll come up here and we'll just go to our root document and we'll move that custom variable up to here just to show you that this is another way to do the same thing. Now you can see my text has changed to white and I can modify multiple different properties inside of here. So you can see the if statement is doing things that are already done by a lot of other CSS features that have been enabled over the recent years of CSS. It just allows you to do them in a different way. So it's really great for doing certain things like inlining a few styles, but it's also kind of lacking when you want to modify a lot of different styles. I will show you one case where I think that this is really useful, especially while we wait for custom media queries to be enabled. So what we need to do is we're gonna come in here with the root of our document. I'm gonna get rid of what we have up here. All that can go away. And what I wanna do is I essentially wanna create custom variables for a breakpoint. So we can just call this BP or breakpoint or whatever you want. I think a small variable name makes it easier to work with. And we can throw in an if statement right here. So what I wanna do is I just wanna check a bunch of different media queries. So we can say, for example, 500 pixels, or we'll make it 600. That is going to be for small screen sizes. So we'll give this a variable name of small. Then we can come down, make sure I use a semicolon here. And we can do the exact same thing for 1,000 pixels. And this needs to be width less than or equal to 1,000 pixels. There we go, same thing here. Width is less than or equal to 600 pixels. We'll make this medium. And then by default, we'll make the scale of large. So now we've essentially defined a custom variable called BP, which is a breakpoint across these different sizes. And we can use that custom variable inside of an if statement. So we can essentially create custom breakpoints for all of our different styles. So now I can come up here and I can say that if my style for breakpoint is equal to small, then our background color is gonna be green. If our breakpoint is set to medium, then we'll change it to blue. And then we can come down here and we'll just say that if it's going to be large, we'll change it to red. And we can just have some random fallback. It really doesn't matter what that is because these all should be hit and that's all we care about. Now, if we give this a save, you can see as I move this around, we have green, we have blue, and then we have black because it looks like there's something wrong going on. Looks like the reason for this is I forgot to put a semicolon at the end of large here. So now you can see when we're in that large breakpoint, it is red, medium is blue, and small is green. Now this is really useful, especially if you're used to working inside of something like Tailwind, because very often you will define a lot of things based on breakpoints. So in like Tailwind, you could do like medium text small, for example, and then maybe on a larger screen size, you'll do like large text large, something like that. This is a very common way of working inside of Tailwind, and you can kind of almost port this to CSS by using a simple if check to create a single variable that you use across your entire site for your different breakpoints, and then you can use those inside of if statements to essentially define exactly what each one of those breakpoints would look like. You could also use this inside of those container style queries if you want to as well, but it's really up to you however you want to use this. Now, the final case I see for these different types of if statements is going to be working with the newer way of using the attribute function inside of CSS. And this is something I'm actually super excited about. I'm gonna be making a video for very soon. I'll link it in the cards and description when I get it out. But it's essentially a function that allows you to work with any attribute inside of HTML. We're gonna be mostly working with data attributes, but it can be literally any attribute you want. So we'll come in here and we'll say data 
status, and we'll just set it equal to a random status. It doesn't matter what it is. We'll just say loading, for example. And now inside of here, I can actually read that exact status by saying data status, just like this. I can set this to a variable. We'll just say status. And that's all it takes to create our attribute itself. Now there's a ton more you can do with this. I'll link a video in the cards and description that is going to be coming out very soon covering this full attribute. But now we can actually use this inside of our code. So in our style, instead of checking for this breakpoint, let's check for a status. And we're gonna check for a status of loading. We're also gonna have a status of loaded. And let's come in here with a status of error down here. I'll make sure I change both of these two status. And now depending on what my status is, my color eye box should change. And when I save, you'll notice it changes to green because we have a data status of loading. If I change this to error, my box changes to red. And if I change it to loaded, you can see my box has changed to blue. So I'm able to use this custom status attribute to be able to define what the actual background color and so on is gonna be. And this I think is probably the most powerful use case for the if statement. You can still kind of make this work with custom queries and style queries, but it's so much easier with an if statement. And this I think is honestly where the big power of an if statement is when you combine it with these data attributes that you can read with the attribute function. And speaking of that attribute function, if you want to learn all about it, I will link the video right over here as soon as I finish recording it. It should come out in about a week. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.